Kristen Troftenson, uh, WikiLeaks chief editor, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Uh, so it's known that Julian Assange attempted to warn Hillary Clinton now over a series of sensitive cables. What weight do you think that that latest tape uh, adds? Well, this should have a tremendous weight because it uh, basically throws out the argument that is uh, in the narrative of the Justice Department in the, their indictment and which they are trying to use you know, to get him extradited out of the UK. They are talking about irresponsible behavior and putting lives at risk. Now, this evidence that you heard, and I can confirm that this is authentic, uh, is not new to the courts in the UK. A transcript of uh, this conversation was presented to the court in September. Uh, it shows that uh, that uh, Julian Assange did take, uh, take action to try to prevent the release of the unredacted cables. This was nine months into the project, though, at WikiLeaks was very carefully uh, administering the release of these diplomatic cables in conjunction and with with the help of 100-plus uh, media partners. Uh, this was un not under Julian's control or WikiLeaks' control. This was betrayal by a former partner and a betrayal uh, by a former media partner, The Guardian. Now, this would show that there was great caretaking and trying to avoid any harm and assisted, uh, uh, provided or offered to mitigate any possible harm. Uh, but that offer was, was ignored. Uh, the State Department never came back to Julian for more information and seemed to have not done anything based on this warning. And keep in mind that this is not... Uh, uh, the allegation is that Julian uh, and WikiLeaks published the unredacted uh, diplomatic cables, 20, 50,000 of them, uh, in September of 2011. But WikiLeaks and Julian were not the primary publisher of the, uh, this material at that time. It has been established and it's undisputed that an American-based uh, uh, website called Cryptom.org was the primary publisher. The secondary publisher was uh, uh, Pirate Bay, who put that uh, in a torrent uh, online. So only after that uh, did WikiLeaks put the, uh, the entire uh, cache of cables online. After all these warnings to the State Department, which was not the first warning, there was an offer almost a year earlier to the State Department to cooperate. So it, it totally goes against the narrative in the indictment and totally goes to show that WikiLeaks and Julian Assange were behaving like a very responsible publisher of the material. Yeah, well, like you said, there have been, you know, there were a lot of unheeded warnings that the U.S. State Department could have uh, given some attention to, but why do you think that they were, they were seemingly so in, uninterested in talking to Assange about it? That can only be speculations, but the, the evidence is there. It's a 75-minute long conversation with a lawyer at the State Department who seemed grateful to get the call, actually, and for all the information that was presented to him, uh, where it was in detail explained why this came about through, through a betrayal of a, of a former uh, employee uh, who was dismissed uh, uh, from his post a year earlier uh, in combination with the, the Guardian journalist mistake, which actually published uh, a password to uh, an encrypted file containing these documents uh, in, a, in a book. So uh, the assistance was uh, offered uh, to, uh, to, uh, to stop this or mitigate uh, any, any possible harm to this. Uh, it is, uh, I have no idea why this was not uh, followed through, and they took up the offer of, uh, of the help that Julian was, was carefully and, and considerably uh, uh, worried in, in, in offering to the State Department. Well, I wanted to bring the discussion to the expected ruling on uh, Assange, Assange's potential extradition to the United States. It's due in January. Uh, do you think that this tape could influence the result of that ruling? I don't know if it's going to influence the ruling on, on, on January 4th. It should. It's one of the absolutely overwhelming evidence uh, against uh, the United States case in its entirety. Uh, there are so many elements that, that, that are, are on, in Julian's favor there. And all this was presented, uh, mind you, in the long court sessions in September until the beginning of October. So it should. Uh, help in, uh, in, 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 in uh, the uh, ruling 
in Julian's favor and against the extradition. Whether that's going to happen or not, it just remains to be seen. And what do you think the influence of uh, Biden sitting in the White House uh, rather than Trump sitting in the White House is going to have on the extradition? And if he is extradited to the United States, what kinds of conse consequences he would face? Well, that's an unknown entity. We don't know uh, the composition in full of the uh, uh, incoming administration. Uh, it is very hard to, to, to see what kind of a, what direction that administration will take uh, in terms of how they uh, view Julian Assange and Snowden, uh, for that matter. Uh, there have been uh, attempts to get a clarity on, on from in the Biden camp of what they think about the, uh, the issue there, but uh, that has not uh, uh, delivered anything. So we don't know what the uh, position will be. Um, there are very strong elements uh, uh, in the U.S. pushing for this case. You could call it the deep states or, 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 or those who are seeking vengeance. But uh, on the other hand, uh, at the same time now, there is a bipartisan, rather strong uh, urging by individuals on Donald Trump to actually pardon him before he leaves the White House. Well, looking more generally now, what do you think, what kind of impact do you think this lengthy legal saga surrounded, uh, you know, surrounding Assange is going to have on, uh, you know, the way the legal system and the way society looks at whistleblowers like them? I believe it might have had a cooling effect and a chilling effect, uh, and especially on, on, on the journalists who are seeing this uh, unfolding in front of their eyes the serious uh, implication it will have for their work, especially if they are reporting on national security issues anywhere in the world. Uh, they would not be safe if uh, Julian is extradited. And the simple fact that he is now being uh, uh, persecuted in the manner he is, uh, is undoubtedly sending a, a chilling effect. And it could have an effect on whistleblowers as well. But uh, on the other hand, We've seen great examples of, uh, of whistleblowers taking extreme, uh, courageous, extremely courageous decision in stepping forward in serving the public uh, when they see that uh, higher ideals are being abused. Well, I also wanted to ask if you've been in contact with uh, Julian Assange as of late. Do you have any? Do you have anything? Have you heard anything from him recently? I mean, uh, you know, the, his his condition. There's not that much information about it. I haven't heard from him directly uh, for a few weeks, uh, but uh, indirectly through his uh, his uh, fiance and uh, and uh, a few other individuals that he is in more easier contact with and the lawyers. Uh, the situation is bad. The COVID is now rampant inside Belmore's prison, which means that he has to spend uh, his days in isolation in the cell. Uh, now, on top of that, uh, it's freezing now in the UK. He has to stack books in the, the, the window to keep the cold out. Uh, he hasn't been supplied with his winter clothes. Uh, he got a couple of blankets uh, a couple of days ago, which helped a lot. But <clears throat> this is a abhorrent situation. And uh, just imagine that uh, we're getting into Christmas and with a, a, a publisher and a journalist sitting in Belmont's prison for simply doing the job, job of journalism. That is uh, simply unacceptable in a Western democracy or any country for that matter. Well, it seems like horrific conditions for a prison in the, in the, in the developed world, you know. Um, I wanted to ask just one more question uh, about the legacy that you think Assange and his work will leave, uh, you know, his work with WikiLeaks. What do you think the legacy is going to be? I mean, I'm absolutely certain. I've been with WikiLeaks for 10 years through all, all, throughout all this term, uh, turmoil and this turmoilous period. Uh, there is no doubt in my mind that uh, we are on the right side of history. History will uh, come to the conclusion when the, the smoke clears that uh, the contribution of Julian Assange to journalism has been extraordinary. Uh, it has been a, a transformative uh, effect. On, on how we conduct uh, journalism. It has expanded the scope of it uh, and uh, been absolutely revolutionary. Uh, that will be accepted uh, more thoroughly in the future. Uh, uh, so I, I, I don't doubt that the future will be a good judge when it comes to Julian Assange's contribution.
Kristen Traffenson, WikiLeaks chief editor, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thanks for having me.